Hello, everybody. My name is Pastor Tony Hansen. I'm the Dean of Students at Great Plains Lutheran High School. And it's my opportunity to talk with you about uh, the orientation uh, important items for you for uh, the dormitory and uh, how things are going to be happening this year of our 25th year at Great Plains Lutheran High School. One of the big things I like to stress here at Great Plains is that we are one big family in Christ. Uh, this year we happen to have 53 dorm residents. Uh, by far, we are not filled up as a as a, a dormitory, but um, in a way, that's a blessing from God. Uh, it gives us a little bit of a chance to uh, um, be social distance and uh, also uh, reevaluate again how we want to do some things at the dorm and and uh, in the sense do things all well, all things well. Uh, God's given us um, some great dorm supervisors. Um, our dorm mom, Carla Klug, who's been with us all 25 years of, of Great Plains Lutheran High School. Um, she is our, our dorm mom and, and our main contact person. Um, Tyler Wall, who is in his second year of serving Great Plains this year. Um, he is uh, our male supervisor. And our female supervisor is Rebecca Deering. And uh, she's in her first year of supervising. And, and all three are, are awesome, uh, well uh, equipped and um, uh, great people to, to have as dorm supervisors in the dormitory. Uh, we also have five resident assistants or RAs and uh, two male and three female and uh, they will be uh, there to assist our students, be there as sounding boards, be there to help with um, dorm staff and to be a good liaison between student body and dorm staff and, and uh, school in general and to be there also to help out if, if uh, some of our students have a little issues of, you know, what's going on, help them along, and, and to be there for them. So uh, please take note of uh, uh, the fact that God's blessed us with a great big family, but also great leadership within the dorm. One thing I want to stress, though, about the dorm is that uh, it is a home away from home. Um, our dorm offers so much for our students. Uh, spacious room for two roommates, uh, includes great comfortable bunk beds, individual dressers, closets, desks, chairs. Uh, each room has its own sink, bathroom, and shower. Um, it is, I'd say, the cream of the crop as far as dorm rooms in our synod. Uh, but a couple things I want to stress is uh, it may be uh, a, a place where you have all these awesome different benefits, but it is home. And we do want our kids to enjoy the dorm and to decorate and to make it their own because it is a place where they get to live for nine months. But there are certain guidelines and certain rules that are laid out for um, families to follow in order to know how things go well in the dorm. And uh, all those different guidelines and rules are meant for a great purpose, for cleanliness and careful use. Uh, we've been given a great gift um, in our dormitory uh, we have so much, again, to, for it to offer to our students and families. But taking care of it and uh, making sure we do things well and keeping it clean is a great way to say thank you, especially to all of those donors and those people who've made it possible to make sure we do have a dormitory and to keep it good for those coming in the future. So I'd encourage you to um, go to the dorm handbook, check those things out as far as how to take care of cleaning the bathrooms and the sinks and how to put things up on the wall and such. And to, uh, again, uh, if you check those things out to make sure everything's available for your, your students and your children to, to take care of the dorm as best way as possible. It is an awesome place. Um, like I said, it's the best probably in the, in the Synod. And uh, let's just take a few minutes each day to keep things clean and, and make it home away from home a place where the kids want to be, but also a place that they're preserving and taking care of for the future. Being that it is uh, home away from home, uh, we do understand that, um, you know, we don't have to dress necessarily in school clothes to be at the dorm. Um, time to, you could say, let our hair down a little bit and to relax. A um, couple things, though, with that, we don't want to go too far in our relaxation, though, either. Um, when we have our dress and appearance of the dorm, uh, we want to do it in such a way that, especially the second point there where it says we're a witness, we want to give a witness as to who we are in Christ and our appearance. 
Uh, we want to definitely be pleasing to our Lord and especially to other people who might be in the dorm we're not even um, aware of. Uh, we have guests and visitors that do come, grandparents and parents and friends that, that are there in the dorm. And if we're, again, we're, we're dressing in ways that uh, don't give glory to God and, and are actually very uh, um, inappropriate, uh, definitely does, um, again, sh shed uh, not a good light on, on who we are and, and who we are as God's people. So uh, positively, let's dress in a way that, that brings uh, glory to God and do it in a modest way, not necessarily bringing unwarranted attention to ourselves or even possibly causing other people to, uh, to question and to uh, give offense. So uh, let's take care of things and dress with modesty and decency out of love for our Lord. Uh, therefore, we encourage appropriateness. Um, we are, as uh, Great Plans Lutheran High School, partnering with you, partnering with you to uh, prepare our students and your children to meet a world that will make decisions about employment and advancement, partially on what people see in first impressions. So uh, we yes, we do have a dress code for school, and uh, even the dress code in a sense while at the dorm. And although it's not always popular, um, we are asking uh, all of us, students and faculty and staff, to glorify God in uh, providing a way that we can dress decently and in order to uh, give uh, great glory to God and to... Uh, also protect and to uh, give uh, great glory to uh, the Lord in, in our school as well. So uh, let's follow along with that. Uh, some good old street knowledge that's coming along um, for all of us to know. And again, that maybe this isn't always fully in the handbook, but it's uh, stuff you need to know. It is uh, stuff about cars and jobs and studies and study hall and internet availability, pers and absences. I'll take a moment with each one. Some street knowledge, uh, as far as cars are concerned, is uh, students are allowed to have cars on campus, but uh, please let the dorm staff know ahead of time um, that your student is going to actually have a car on campus. That makes that make sure we have places for them to park, and also uh, we are prepared to, again, be ready for them to uh, hand in their keys at night, and um, again, just to take care of their, their vehicles. Uh, not that there's a fee for that, but Again, just good orderliness and, and care for that. Jobs, uh, students are allowed to have jobs, but again, they need to uh, talk to dorm staff and to me to make sure it's okay. That, again, grades need to be where they need to be. Uh, you as parents need to give us the thumbs up that they can do that. And uh, if that's all okay, um, there are certain hours that students can work. And uh, again, the dorm handbook lays all that out. Uh, please check into that. But um, again, jobs are, are meant to be an extra thing, not uh, the primary thing while here at school. So as long as the grades are up and you're okay with that and, and uh, your, your child can have a job um, and perhaps even use their car to get to a job. And uh, again, dorm staff and, and I and even our administration team would say that there's no problem with that. Our students are more than welcome to have a job. Of course, there are certain uh, rules and regulations and age requirements in Watertown for uh, jobs to be held. So those will all be things that need to be taken uh, into, into account. And of course, worship needs to be taken into account. Uh, we don't want any job to be able to um, take students away from school or from their opportunities to worship the Lord. Studies and study hall. Uh, again, we're students here at Great Plains, even student athletes or student workers. Student always comes first. And that's why they're here. So uh, to make sure that uh, our, our students and your, your children have time to study, uh, we provide a, an hour of study hall each night from Sunday through Thursday night. And they give your student an opportunity to catch up on work and get work done for the next day or stuff that they didn't catch up on the day before. Uh, but that's an hour of, of dedicated time uh, each night from Sunday to Thursday to make sure things can get done. So. If you have any special guidelines for us to know about your child for study hall, if you want them to study a little bit longer, if they want some particular attention that we perhaps can give, if they need time for some tutoring, um, please contact me or your the, the teacher in particular that we can line some things up. Uh, contact the dorm staff as well in case you know you're curious, is my student getting enough time to study? Um, how are they studying? 
uh, that's all very good and, and great to, to be involved with that. So uh, please make sure that's all happening. And again, study hall is there for your students uh, that they might be able to, uh, again, give dedicated time each night uh, to their studies while here. Does it limit them to that hour? By no means. Um, they certainly can study more than that as well. And I'm sure they will, because uh, there's also study uh, hours, uh, study hall times during the day at school. But in the dorm, there's definitely study hall times. Uh, which also leads me to the next thought of internet availability. Um, the internet is available at school and at the dorm. Uh, in the dorm, it's available on the student network to a certain point of time, about 10 o'clock each night. Um, and then the internet goes off. If your student needs some extra time to get things done, have them talk to the dorm staff and uh, we can make sure that happens um, and not to get them in trouble for needing to spend up, spend a little more time getting some homework done. But again, it's available. And especially as seasons come and get more busier, such as basketball season, um, practices or plays or being gone for certain things during the day um, that can stress out uh, time a little bit. Again, we'll, we'll make sure that's available for your student to get things done. Uh, PERS are uh, another way of saying that your child has a permission to not be in study hall. And each uh, class has a little different ranking system for that, where seniors have um, the most PERS available, at least for the first quarter. After the first quarter, seniors are not uh, expected to be in study hall. They are free from that. But first quarter, they still need to be in study hall to get off on the right foot. And the juniors don't have quite so many PERS and sophomores not so quite, quite so many as juniors and freshmen not so, not so many as, as sophomores. But what those are is permissions not to have to be in study hall. It's like a free night. And they can uh, do something else. Uh, they can watch a movie. They can, you know, if they want to go take a trip down to, to Walmart or to IV for something, that's something that they can do. But uh, again, that's all based on grade point average and the year of school in which they're in. Uh, PERS are like gold around here, and uh, we certainly want our kids to, uh, again, uh, use them in a God-pleasing way and to uh, uh, help themselves out and to, to get a break every once in a while. As far as absences are concerned, if your student is going to be absent for something, uh, whether it be for class, perhaps a, a junior is going to go on a class uh, or school visit uh, to a college somewhere and you're picking them up and bringing them back late, uh, please let us know. Uh, by the same token, if your uh, student is going, isn't going to get back to uh, the dorm on time, uh, such as a Sunday night by 9 o'clock, please let us know. Uh, if they're going to be gone for a day or two because of a family thing, please let us know. Uh, if they don't feel well, uh, have your dorm student talk to Carla by 7 o'clock in the morning, and um, she'll relay that message on to our secretary at school that they will be your student will be absent because they are sick and in the world of COVID today um, we certainly don't want to abuse that but we also want to be safe and uh, again make sure everybody knows where everybody is and how they're doing so that's just good some good street knowledge for for us to know uh, that brings me to the health idea of students being sick again um, we live in the world in which there's COVID and uh, there's plenty of things being done in our dormitory to take care of our COVID measures. I uh, refer you to the, the sheet that was sent out and, and the starting well um, plans for that. Uh, but uh, essentially we are family and uh, we're not making it mandatory for our students to wear masks, although if they want to wear them, they are more than welcome to do so, uh, especially if there is someone not feeling necessarily well and uh, just is not feeling right, um, you know, got the sniffles, got a tickle in their throat, maybe some allergy things or, or something like that, please, please encourage your children to wear masks and they're not going to be looked down upon it. But um, again, we want to take care of all of ourselves and a love for each other. Um, it's not always about me. It's about how I, how I can uh, best serve each other as family in Christ, which also might mean social distancing. Um, you know, if we're not feeling well, maybe it's just best we stay in our room. Uh, we are going to encourage social distancing the best we can. Um, you know, the kids are hanging out. Um, please, you know, just keep your distance. Um, you know, avoid touching things and, and uh, getting too many um, germs around. Uh, encourage our kids to 
you know, our students to, to wipe down their, their door handles and their desks and keep their rooms clean. Um, you know, all those different types of things, um, social distancing and keeping things clean. Uh, the what if question, what if somebody does feel like they have a fever and a cough and a, a uh, sore throat and a runny nose or they can't taste or they can't smell, um, that would be a great time um, to talk to Carla and her dorm staff. And then what if uh, we'll have uh, Carla and the dorm staff contact Brown Clinic um, and, and get an appointment made for one of our physicians here at Brown Clinic to actually uh, do an examination of your student and to determine whether or not a, a uh, COVID test is necessary or if it's something else. Maybe it's just a sinus headache or, or maybe it's uh, bronchitis and we need to get antibiotics or something else for that. Um, Brown Clinic is the place where we go. It's across the street to the north of our school. And uh, we have somebody uh, that is our point of contact, our POC. Her name is Heather. And I'd like you to jot down that number uh, at 605-884-4313. Um, she is the, the lady that uh, works with us at Great Plains and will help us with all of our what if questions. And one of the things that she's encouraged us to do, especially for dorm families, is to call her ahead of time and to uh, pre-register our students, your, your children there at Brown Clinic, so that everything can be expedited as quick as possible in case uh, your child is not feeling well and we need to get them over there for testing or for an examination. So I'd encourage you to do that. Please call Heather at that number, 605-884-4313, as soon as you can uh, during business hours. Um, to call Brown Clinic and get your child, your children pre-registered. So in case something were to come up, um, we don't have to worry about paperwork, but everything will just be, you know, expedited and, and appointments and everything else can be made and your children will be in the system. Um, so they're, they're very helpful and very desiring to help us out. But again, in this time of COVID, we don't want to uh, take any chances and do whatever we can to make sure our children are safe and healthy. So again, if your children need the the the, the, the the attention, excuse me, um, have them talk to Carla whenever and uh, dorm staff, and then we'll get appointments made and um, we'll get them over there to Brown Clinic. Next thing of dorm is relationships. Um, again, friendships are great. Um, we make friends that last for perhaps a lifetime while we live in the dorm or we're in high school and probably both. Um, but one thing we want to stress in the dormitory with such close measures is we want to respect each other and respect ourselves and do it out of respect for God and love for him. So um, although at this time of life, where there be, you know, a young 14 year old to um, maturing 18 year olds, we want to be careful of how we um, um, enjoy our relationships. Uh, we want to not give offense with uh, PDA, public display, displays of affection again, how we dress and, and how other people can perceive us and what we might lead others to think. Um, PDA then, therefore, is something we, we certainly uh, caution against and uh, encourage uh, to, to withstand and with, refrain from. Um, so please uh, talk to your students about that and to uh, uh, keep the PDA at a minimum, if, uh, if not at all. Um, Student interaction, um, we want our kids to enjoy our time and not be afraid to be here or, or have a bad taste in their mouth. So hazing and bullying are, are not tolerated at all. Um, we certainly want to show Christian love to each other. Uh, we have 53 different perspectives on things. We have dorm staff with different perspectives on things and the whole student body. Uh, we all have our own opinions um, and that's what they are. Uh, but we do have a commonality of faith and love in Christ. So uh, we want to respect each, each other, uh, but not push each other over the edge and ruin their time and bully them. So uh, please encourage your children to respect everyone. And uh, again, we'll, we'll take care of, of instances that come along because we're not perfect, but uh, hazing and bullying are not tolerated. Uh, nor is la bad language, uh, whether it be spoken or written or social media. Uh, the temptation today is teens are teens and they're just going to swear. 
or they're just going to say things. And you can say that about any age group. Um, but as God's people, we want to definitely uh, speak from our Christian heart and speak what is God pleasing and whether it be spoken um, to face or to some about somebody else when they're not around, whether we write about them um, in a letter or pass a note to them or even what can be posted on social media. Uh, please make sure that as you prepare your children to come to the dorm, let's do things in a God-pleasing way and, and uh, speak in a way that's uh, not disrespectful or giving offense to others, but again, just again giving glory to God and, and treating others as uh, we want to treat be treated ourselves and giving glory to Jesus. Again, the Jesus, others, and ourself, it's a great priority list. We want to honor Jesus above all. Uh, personal safety, um, Watertown Police Department is a, a great partner that we have to uh, come and take care of us. Um, they have a, a vested interest to make sure we are safe as well as the rest of the city is safe. Um, so by, by law, there are no weapons allowed on our campus whatsoever. Um, if, if your student wants to bring something for hunting um, of, of sorts, uh, those things can be stored off campus, and please contact me uh, for that. I can certainly do that. Uh, by the same token, we also uh, welcome our police department to give our canines, uh, their canines, I should say, opportunity to, to practice um, sniffing through uh, things for uh, safety sake, um, just again to keep our students safe from, from uh, illegal drugs and, and the such. So uh, periodically, um, the canines will come through the dorm or they'll come through school, uh, they'll go through classrooms, they'll check book bags, they'll check vehicles in the parking lot, again, to keep us all safe and to, again, um, uh, look out for uh, anything that might possibly be of a temptation that we can help our students as best we can through things perhaps they're struggling with. Um, so anyways, the Watertown Police Department is a, a great um, resource and a great partner with us to, for our own children's personal safety. There are a lot of fun things to do um, for our dorm kids. Um, you know, it's not all school. <laughs> there's lots of other fun things to do. Uh, there's a lot of free time, especially on weekends. And although our students want to get, I'm sure, a lot of extra sleep and just hang out with their friends, you know, we do schedule things from time to time, um, such as some pumpkin carving or some Christmas decoration. There are movie nights. Uh, we've had the ultimate Frisbee. We've had open gyms. We've done a Wii Fest. Um, and, and give our, our students, uh, dorm students, chances to do some fun things uh, within the dorm and within the framework of, of dorm family. But there's other things around town that the kids can do, such as uh, partake and be part of uh, the Prairie Lakes Wellness Center. There is an awesome um, sweet deal that uh, our students get at the Wellness Center here in town. It's a nine-month membership and for a dirt cheap price, and the kids have all the access to all the fun stuff over there from a swimming pool to gyms to um, racquetball court to treadmills to weightlifting stuff. It's all there. And it's a, just a short walk away from school or a quick drive uh, if one of the dorm staff members or one of the other classmates can, can get them over there. There's a number of different disc golf courses in town, for two for sure. Uh, one within walking distance, one a little bit further away. But uh, it's, it's great for Frisbee golf, and our, uh, many of our kids uh, enjoy that, uh, especially on the weekend. We've got a great library here in Watertown with lots of different uh, media for our kids to enjoy. And to get to sign up, they can use their school address or their home address. But again, just like anything, light books can bring late, late fees. So uh, kids can certainly uh, borrow those things, but just make sure they get them there on, back on time. And then our student council plans a lot of different things, from dances to homecoming activities to mall trips, whether it be to Minneapolis or up to Fargo or even down Sioux Falls. Uh, there's periodic plans for that, and uh, student council is on top of that. So plenty of things for our, our dorm kids to do and to uh, enjoy some time. Uh, once in a while, we'll plan something else to do as well on the spur of the moment. But again, it's a great place to be for God's people and for our dorm kids. Um, that brings us to then visitors and, and weekends home. Um, Everybody is always welcome at the dorm, whether it be our GPL students and families, uh, faculty, uh, other guests and visitors, but we're going to ask, especially in light of COVID right now, to call ahead, to uh, check to make sure things are going well um, for your own safety and for the safety of others. 
um, please call ahead, call the dorm staff. And again, for those numbers, you can look back on your, your dorm handbook and find those phone numbers, uh, especially Carla and uh, Mr. Wall and, and Ms. Deering. Uh, please call them. And then when you're given the, the permission and the go ahead to come, uh, please have uh, your, your, please take the time to sign in and sign out so that we know where you're at and, and uh, how long you were here and again and when, when you left again for safety's sake. Uh, our, our Great Plains students are going to need to do the same thing um, and our faculty too but again uh, just being uh, considerate and, and making sure everything's good at the dorm and, uh, and, and you get checked and you get there and, and we make sure everything's good there too. Uh, that brings us to the, to the weekends and long distance things. Um, by all means, we want our kids to be able to head home and, and to enjoy time with their families. We're not by no means trying to steal them away from, from you as parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles, and friends. We want them to enjoy time home with you. So um, they come home, that's great. And if they want to bring friends home, that's also fine. But again, permissions. And so if uh, Joy wants to take a and Johnny home for a weekend. Um, we want both parents to let us know that uh, they're going to be heading home for the weekend and we get permissions and uh, everybody's feeling well and it's all going to be good and, and a great time and rides are all lined up. So, you know, whether it's be Joey or John or, or Susie and Sarah, you know, again, both sets of parents, give us a call so we know what's going on and then, um, and then we can uh, give permissions and and uh, make sure everybody's feeling well and it's all on the up and up. Uh, also, when it comes to long distance over some of our long breaks, so breaks such as Labor Day coming up quickly, if uh, you can host somebody from a long distance, uh, we've got plenty of students from Wisconsin and Florida and Alabama and uh, Alaska and Utah and the such. If, if you can host some of those students, um, even those from out of country uh, who are again are here, uh, please let me know. Um, email me, call me so that we can uh, get everybody lined up and have a place to go for those long distance, uh, long weekends where the dorm is closed and uh, we need places for them to be. Um, that would be awesome. And again, my phone number and my email will be at the very end of this presentation. So uh, hosting is a huge thing and we're very thankful to all of our hosts we've had in the past and uh, certainly look forward to that in the future. Um, Finally, though, uh, divine worship. We are God's people, and uh, we want to go worship him and give him thanks and have him feed our faith uh, as a as family as well. So uh, worship times uh, are at St. Martin's, which is two blocks to the west of us here, as well as Bethlehem. They're, both churches are on the same 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 block. Uh, for our, our, our dorm students, we would love you to be at our, our worship services. Uh, if you're from a different denomination, we respect that. And if you want to worship at one of your uh, denomination churches, there are plenty of them in town. Uh, please let us know, though, how you're going to get to and from those services. But for the most part, our students walk over to St. Martin's or walk to Bethlehem. And you can see the times that are, are posted there. Um, right now, St. Martin's has offered a new Saturday service at 7 p.m., uh, probably during um, the fall and winter and early spring. It's going to be more like 6 o'clock, but for now it's 7 o'clock. But those are mask-required um, services. That's Saturday at 7 p.m. at St. Martin's. Um, Sundays, St. Martin's offers 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. And uh, there are specific pews reserved for um, our students at St. Martin's. We just asked that... Um, our students sign up for what service they're going to go to, so uh, St. Martin's knows when our students are going to be there. Uh, we can serve 20 of our students at a time at these services, so whether it be 7 or 8 or 10.30, uh, doesn't matter. Um, but just so our, 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 our church here in town knows, our St. Martin's knows that they'll be there, um, and we ask that the, the, the students sign up so that we can share that information. At Bethlehem Evangelical Lutheran Church, they have services at 9 a.m. Again, uh, no masks are required at St. Martin's 8 and 10.30 or Bethlehem 9 a.m. But uh, again, to social distance, to sit, you know, in, in special places, to have pews reserved um, at St. Martin's is great. Bethlehem doesn't have pews reserved, but they are social distancing. So uh, I want to make sure that uh, they can have worship there as well. So again, the COVID effect, social distancing is happening. 
Um, if you're not feeling well, um, just again, stay back. But um, otherwise, be at the stead, be at church, be at worship, and uh, praise your Lord and have him feed you with his word. Uh, mentioning there again, register at the dorm for worship at St. Martin's. And that's uh, for Sunday at 8 and 1030 and Saturday night at 7. And uh, come as you are at Bethlehem. You don't need to sign up for that. But again, uh, um, take the time to go worship. In the winter time, if it gets too cold, we'll have uh, worship at the dorm. And I'll take care of those things for us. But uh, for the most part, uh, dress appropriately, get to, get to church. And, um, and we encourage our kids to be there and to a worship with uh, these two churches that love to support our school and to praise our Lord. And absolutely, finally then, any questions and answers, please get a hold of me, um, Pastor Tony Hansen, Dean of Students. You've got my cell phone number there, at uh, 880-5792, or email me at thanson at gplhs.org, or, of course, you can also call the dorm staff as well. But uh, it's been a real pleasure and privilege to be able to share all this information with you. Uh, we wish the greatest blessings to all of you this school year. And again, if you have questions or answers, or have questions and you want answered, please get a hold of me and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Uh, thanks for watching and God's blessings to you. And uh, may the Lord be with us and bless us through the year of uh, 2020 to 2021.